Okay. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm sorry. My voice is still really bad. Um, and uh, I look horrible. I have no makeup on. This is my natural self. And um, it's actually 6 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. I am wide awake. Um, I have been crying. God woke me up and he has told me to pray. And um, pray very, very specifically. And I thought I would share this with you. Um, I don't even have my bedroom light on, you guys. I'm using a lamp. So, um, I did put a little bit of lip gloss on. And I brushed my hair. But I have not had a shower. I'm not up. I haven't even brushed my teeth. This is me, naturally. Without any makeup on. And um, God wants me to be natural with you. God wants me to um, show you the real me. He wants me to be vulnerable to you right now. And um, God has told me to pray very specifically. And I want to share that with you on um, how God is guiding me right now. And my discernment to do his will is very, very high. Um, there has been moments in my divorce where I have felt God speaking to me. And I really have just gotten on my knees and just cried out to him. And this was one of those mornings for some reason. So God is um, telling me to uh, pray this morning. Um, I've been praying for about 45 minutes. Like I said, I've just been crying. My prayer was so deep. I still don't feel 100%. I still feel tired. But God woke me up. I don't think I had a dream. If I did, I don't remember it. But I got up to go to the bathroom, came back, laid back down, thought I was going to go back to sleep. I looked at the clock um, on my phone, see what time it was. It said 6 o'clock. And um, I'm all alone. This is the weekend where my boys are at their dad's. quiet and God says cry out to me I heard him I heard his voice he says give me the desires of your heart tell me what they are and be very specific My first response is, God, do you really want me to be that specific? What I want? Is this why I'm struggling? Is this why you want me to have this situation that I'm going through? Is because you want me to be very specific?
being specific means I have to tell God how angry I am, how hurt I am. Being specific means I need to just surrender everything to him. Being specific means I need to pray for things that I think are wrong to pray for. But yet, it's how I feel. I am praying to God. I need you to do these things that are going to hurt people. God tells me that the only way people sometimes come to know him is, is by having everything stripped I'm praying for my ex-husband. My ex-husband used to um, have three DUIs. And those three DUIs, a long time ago, we're going to put him in, in jail for 10 years. And... He was going to run, going to run to another state, and he was going to um, ignore the consequences of his actions of drinking and driving. His sin. He was going to run away from his sin. And God intervened. God saved him. This is a story that really helped me fall in love with my husband. Because he had that come to God moment. He told me this story when we first met. About how God turned his life around. He didn't have anywhere to go. He didn't have anything in it. He was living almost on the street. He was a bum. And he had this come to God moment. And right now God tells me to pray for what I want. I need that come to God moment for my husband again. I don't want him to have to lose everything. But I need him back with God. I need him to have that discernment that God can give you to know that what you're doing is wrong. I need my husband to Turn his life over to God and surrender everything. Because he has nowhere to run. Right now he's running into the arms of a non-Christian woman. And do you know what I have to pray for? Because this is what I really want. And God wants me to be specific. I have to pray that when he looks at her or any other non-Christian woman that he wants to that he vomits in his mouth and that he just gets so nauseous he can't even stand to look at her. That's what I've got to pray for because God tells me to be specific of what I want. <laughs> I want my husband to He's so sick to his stomach when he sees a non-Christian girl. That 
He's so repelled by them. That he has nothing, he doesn't want anything to do with them. Any girl. I don't care if it's a relative. If he's not seeing Christ in their life, I'm asking that he gets sick. I'm asking God that my husband will fall on his knees in repentance of his sins. I'm asking God that he will kick that new girl friend out of his life and out of his home with my child. I pray that he'll want to be the father that my child deserves. I'm praying that he will do what's right. I am praying that my husband loses his home. That he loses family members' love and support. That are telling him that it's okay to divorce your wife. I am asking God to surround him with Christian support and love that has given him advice. Telling him that it's wrong what he's doing. I'm asking God to bring my husband to him, draw him closer to him. He's he knows God. I know he knows God. But he's not depending on God. He knows him here. I just don't know if he knows him here. God wants me to be very specific. I'm praying that my husband's girlfriend will come to know Christ. Because if she knew Christ, she would know what she's doing is wrong. I'm praying that she says, go back to your wife. And she leaves him. Really? God? Really? He wants me to be specific. I'm praying for heartache. For my husband. Praying that he'll fall on his knees and surrender to Christ. I'm praying that my child will see God living in my husband. I'm praying that my husband will feel the pain that I am feeling. The loneliness of not having anybody in his life who he can hide behind or who I pray that all these people could be removed out of his life some way or by decision even. It doesn't have to be death, but if that's what it takes, I pray he loses everybody who is not a Christian in his life, a true Christian. I pray that my husband keeps those godly people in his life that are supporting him spiritually. I'm praying that if God wants to turn my husband over to a reprobate mind that he protects me and my children 
I'm praying that me and my children can feel love and find that spiritual leader in our life. In a in a in a husband and a father for my kids. I'm praying that God will help me financially. Praying that God will bless my own business, my job, daycare, and I pray that God will keep providing. I'm asking God to give us a home over here in the school district. I was very specific. I pray that God will bless me seven times more the things that were taken away. I'm praying for discernment. I'm praying for God to heal my heart of the grieving process of my divorce. I'm praying that my husband will see God in me and he will be drawn to me because he sees that. And I pray that if God doesn't want me with my husband, that God will take away my love for him. God will bring a godly Christian man into my life who will be a great father to my children. These are promises that God says, if you ask, you'll get it. Be specific. I'm praying that financially my husband is ruined. I'm praying that his girlfriend will leave him. I'm praying that his cousin, who he gets all of his advice from, and he does whatever she says, will... Tell him, I have my own family. Make your own decisions. Go back to your wife. Do what's right. I pray that those that are on drugs will be removed out of my husband's life and out of the home that he lives in. I'm praying that the home is taken away. Because it was taken away from me. And having your home taken away really just put you right in place to where you need to depend on God to give you a new home. That's why I was okay with selling the house in my divorce. 50-50 split. Sell the house. I could have used that money. It would have helped me. Instead, I've got a little small portion and he's got the house with a girlfriend in it. Sleeping in my room. It's so wrong. It's not following Christ. Divorcing your wife and kicking her out of the house with the children. It's nothing godly about it. I prayed that God will do whatever it takes. To bring my husband to him. Whatever it takes. I pray that. He will have a new story to tell. 
of how God brought him to him. I'm praying that my son will see God in my husband. I pray that my son will see God in me. I'm praying that my son's faith will be restored and, and be... Um, I, I just pray that my my son will see the benefits of a family reunification. I pray that my 14-year-old will love and accept his stepfather once again. We had a conversation the other day, and if he saw God in my ex-husband, he said, if I could see him loving you, Mom, he would be able to see God in, in my ex-husband. But we're not seeing it. He says, Mom, the way he treated you, it, it's not right. It's not godly. He's not making decisions based on what is um, noble and right, pure. The Bible says, we will know them by the fruit. There were moments in my marriage where I saw God in my husband. I'm asking for that revelation again. I want to see God in my husband. I miss him. I miss having a godly man. I miss seeing my husband as God sees him. I'm disappointed. I'm sad. I'm heartbroken. I miss the family unit. I miss the love. And it's not the sex. I miss the family. I miss having my husband walk in the door after work and me having dinner ready for the family and the kids get off the bus. But you know what? I'm a single mom. You know what I'm doing when my kids get off the bus now? I'm working. My kids have to defend on their own a lot of times. Because I have to work so hard to provide. I'm missing having mom and dad working together to go to activities for my kids. I went to the karate ceremony the other day for my nine-year-old and I couldn't even stand looking at my husband. I couldn't even look at him. He's being so fake. He's acting like everything's fine. Oh, I'm so glad you made it. Are you serious? Flat out lying to me in front of my kid. I never really felt loved in my marriage, but I really did feel like God put us together when I first met my husband. He 
He was searching for a godly woman. And he threw her away and dumped me in the trash. He says, I don't love you and I don't want to be with you. I want to be with a non-Christian person. I want to live uh, my life the way I want to live it. He's not turned his life over to God. He's not doing what God commanded him to do. And I'm asking God if that's not going to happen, if he's not going to follow Christ, I pray that God will take away my love for my ex-husband. I'm praying that God will send that man in my life. Because I want to do what's right. I married my husband because God told me to marry him. I married him because God opened my eyes and showed me what kind of man he is. In Christ, I saw God living in my ex-husband. I don't see it. It's gone. I don't know what's happened. I'm asking for God to give me clarification on what's happened. What happened to my husband? Where is he at? Who is he? Who is this man that I love? I'm asking God to protect my 14-year-old. Now, I can tell you guys, I don't love his dad. I never did. I got over that breakup and that divorce so quick. It wasn't godly at all. I'm praying for his dad's girlfriend. He's had lots of girlfriends. It's never bothered me. But I'm praying that they will stop doing some of the things that they're doing, the decisions that they're making. I'm praying that my 14-year-old will have a father who's there for him and who will love him and communicate with his mom and us work together. Co-parent. I'm asking that for... My nine-year-old, that me and my ex-husband will co-parent for him. But I'm asking for a co-parent in my marriage back. With love. Whether you're married or whether you're divorced, you still have to co-parent. I'm asking that God will provide for me financially. I'm asking that God will make me the best mother ever. Praying that I can continue being a virtuous woman. That is a goal of mine. I, I want to be that virtuous woman. I want my children to sing praises to God for because I have been so spiritual and one with Christ. I have a mother like that. And I thank God for her. She's guiding me and she's showing me what a wife should be and a mother should be. She's not negative. She's loving and supporting and she's quiet and she gives me Bible verses. She tells me that God loves me. And she tells me things when that are wrong, like a divorce, like being angry and being jealous. She says it's a it's wrong and you can't be that way. No matter how hurt you are, you can't let that stuff consume you. You have to do what's right, even if your ex-husband doesn't. And she doesn't sugarcoat things. She doesn't enable me.
when someone is not acting godly or if I'm not acting godly, my mother will tell me that's not right. She doesn't condemn me and yell at me and tell me I'm worthless. She does the opposite. She tells me I'm loved by God and by her and she's always there and she listens. I'm praying for my parents' health and our relationship together as a family. I'm praying for my 20-year-old, him and his girlfriend. I pray that they will cling to God and their family. And I'm praying for the health of my grandchild. And I'm praying that the decisions they make will be godly. That they'll seek him in their decisions. I'm praying that God will use me in my... I'm speaking to you guys that I'm honest and raw and that I'm just natural to you guys and vulnerable and show you the pain I'm going through, and the struggles that I have and the good times I have. God says, be joyful. And even though I'm sad right now, because I am in prayer and I'm hurting and I'm coming to God. I am giving him everything. I'm saying I felt worthless in my marriage. I felt unloved in my marriage. And I loved my husband still. I saw God in my husband when he was showing the fruit. But that fruit's gone and I don't know what to do. How can I continue to love him? I want to love my husband as God loves him. And I go back to when I first met him. I didn't like him at first. But God told me. To love him. And God gave me the desire to love him. God told me. I'm giving you this man. I've worked on him for 40 years for you. And here he is. Something's happened. I'm divorced. <laughs> And God is still telling me to love him and pray for him. I don't get it. And I get angry at God. So I'm asking God to take away this anger. That you can just divorce your wife because you're selfish. I'm praying for open communication and co-parenting with my kids. And I'm praying that my children will see Christ in me and see Christ in their father. I don't want everything taken away. From my ex-husband. But I do want him to have that. Come to God moment again. Where he'll seek God. And do what's right. I'm praying that he'll see my video. And I'm praying that my ex-husband will see God in me. And be attracted to me. I'm praying that God will put blinders on my ex-husband, where he will never look at another woman again. And that he wants me. That is so hard to pray for, you guys. Because it's... Number one, so far-fetched. But number two, it's... 
he's hurt me and he's with someone else. I've heard stories where God has healed their marriage and their divorce and they went back and got back together and they have the strongest marriage ever. I was praying for that in my separation that God would stop my divorce and he didn't. And here it's been almost a year later and I'm still praying for my ex-husband. Why? I'm asking for answers from God. Why? I'm asking for him to be so disgusted with sin in his life. I'm just asking that he'll be right with God because if he was right with God I would have still been married to him I'm asking that the family members that are not supporting him and who are enabling him to be removed out of his life those that are not Christians to be removed out of his life and that's pretty much everybody that he has surrounded himself with. I'm praying that the thought of drugs and alcohol disgust him. When we were married, his family members that were on drugs and drinking, even smoking cigarettes, I had no desire to be around. Because I don't like that lifestyle. I don't want to be around it. I don't want my children around it. I'm a Christian. I have friends who are non-Christians. And they drink and they do drugs. And they um, smoke. And I don't want to be around them. I love them. They're still my friends. But it's a disgusting unwanted lifestyle it makes me sick to see people you love making decisions that are not godly and to live lifestyles that are unhealthy and not right not according to God's word I'm also thanking God because he has built my faith during this time. I forgot who I was in Christ. I mean, I haven't changed. But during my marriage, I was not one with Christ. I was one with my, I thought I was one with my husband. And I was ignoring God. I put God on the back burner for my husband. And I didn't realize I had done that to God. I'm asking God for forgiveness for that. But I'm asking that God will build my faith. I'm asking God to use me here on YouTube. That I will bring other people to Christ. I'm asking for all these prayers to be answered. God says, be specific. Ask and you shall receive. Thanking God for all the answers he's going to give me. And I'm also asking that God will help me to continue to pray for my ex-husband. Don't give up.